In this video, we're going to talk about computer memory and sequential logic circuits. We're also going to uh, complete laboratory 3 that implements tooth complement adder subtractor discussed in our previous video. And there is also assignment A3, which is a uh, web form for you to complete, which also covers uh, prior topics uh, related to digital logic structures. Our first presentation is about storage elements, which allow us to construct elements of computer memory. All combinational logic circuits we constructed so far uh, were producing instant results, uh, helping us to construct uh, gates and other circuits that provide instant decisions. However, we need to be able to capture and store the information. So the first challenge is to invent um, a circuit that would potentially be able to capture and store a one bit of information, which could be represented by zero or one. Our first demonstration is RS latch or set reset latch, which we can try to build simulate in digital works. As you can see, I put together uh, a digital works uh, uh, circuitry, uh, which just left to be connected using the wiring tool, uh, connecting set uh, and uh, reset directly to inputs of these NAND gates, and then use one of these uh, LEDs to indicate the state of this device. Alright, so let's uh, put this device into a simulation mode and see what, can, what kind of behavior uh, we are going to get out of this. Let me also indicate that this is my output. Alright, so I'm just about to start my simulation by clicking Run switching to manipulation tool and the normal state of this device when both set and reset inputs are set to one then when temporarily one of these inputs a reset drops to zero you can see that the value of output is being set to zero so reset guarantees that when uh, initially two of the inputs are set to one and and reset goes down to zero, the output will be set to zero. If you want to be able to turn this value uh, to one, you need to drop set to zero. And you see, uh, in this kind of a ca a case, uh, in this transition uh, of the input to a different combination, we instantly get the result one. And when we go back to uh, one, one, on both set and reset, uh, the output remembers its value. So the, these are the two signals that can be supplied uh, to this latch circuit to update the value stored uh, by these uh, two gates cross-wired uh, like this in their connections. This uh, uh, set reset latch demonstrates a very primitive uh, element of memory because by supplying different combinations on the input we're triggering the state uh, composed of these two uh, NAND gates. Now everything would be great but there is one problem with this circuit. Uh, there is a situation where if again I continue to uh, operate in my run mode continue to use my manipulation tool. If now both of these inputs drop to zero, uh, we begin to have a conflict in the, um, um, in the inputs that we supply to the gates and the way we rewire them back. 
in a cross connection like this. So basically what happens is that um, we can follow all possible combinations and uh, uh, there there definitely be a conflict when at this uh, uh, junction right here one of the gates will be supplying a zero and another one will be supplying a one which is in conflict with one another um, and basically this uh, combination of inputs zero and zero considered to be uh, an illegal input for this circuit. So there is this uh, significant restrictions where this is illegal. Let's switch back to a stable mode, which is directed by uh, one and one, uh, and then test it again. We're just going to uh, set, uh, which does set to one, and reset, which instantly resets to zero, and we're going to go back to the stable mode where the remembered uh, in, uh, input continues to be captured by this device. One improvement that we can make is to put together a gated D-latch. It combines uh, this previously constructed set reset latch with two more NAND gates which have uh, wired um, to two inputs, uh, the data and write enable uh, input. And so now with those two inputs, we can control the stored value in the set reset latch, which much uh, greater efficiency. And also uh, this uh, device will guarantee that set and reset, uh, set and reset uh, wires will never be set to a zero signal, which is a requirement of the D-latch. I will mod modify our circuit to do a new, have a new function. Stop running. As you can see, I'm adding two new NAND gates. I will also need one inverter and two new inputs, which is the data and the write enable signal. Use wiring tool to make necessary connections. and then make necessary adjustments to just keep the line straight. So here this is a new version of my circuit. Let us also update the title. So now it will be gated D-latch. If we try to simulate the behavior of the circuit, put it in a run, a run mode and switch to uh, tool manipulation or object interaction right here. Uh, so we have our output uh, currently is being set to one. Uh, but if I turn on a write enable, uh, you can see that my data is zero and instantly the output over here changes to a zero. If I want to set it to one, I can just change the data but it only happens when the right enable signal is turned on. Now, if um, I want to, I can uh, stop supplying right enable. And now, regardless whether uh, whatever the data is, the output is protected and the state of these two gates is stable and they don't change because both of these set and reset intermediate inputs to the side of the circuitry are set to one, which provides stability to the signal 
if I want to change it to zero, I need to change my data that I want and say write enable. And you can see that now it is being uh, instantly updated. Now, write enabled input is typically designed as a clock input since it is often controlled by a clock circuit that has to synchronize multiple latch, uh, latches uh, or latch circuits with each other, which would allow us to construct uh, multiple uh, storage elements. So far, this uh, gated D latch represents a storage of one bit of information. So this is a one-bit memory implementation, and you can see that it has a reasonable way to control the state of this device by simply using the data input and the control input, which allows us to uh, specify when exactly we want the new uh, value to be remembered or written into this one-bit memory. A register is a structure constructed uh, from these uh, types of uh, gated D latches that stores a number of bits in one unit. So you can see that we have multiple data signals corresponding to the respectable uh, D latch device in uh, uh, this diagram. We have four of them. We could expand them to 8 or 16 or 32 and so forth. Right? And the right enable. Uh, or clock signal uh, is supplied uniformly to all of these latches in a similar manner. And the Q uh, outputs right here, of course, would be the combination of bits uh, that we uh, can remember in this current uh, structure. Uh, and uh, altogether, this demonstrates a 4-bit uh, register. Now, for the sake of uh, uh, notation uh, conveniences uh, in diagrams and in circuit designs, uh, there is this notation that we can use. Uh, basically, we can indicate that uh, bits or sequence of bits uh, is recorded, is identified by a certain letter, but we can specify the range of bits, uh, 3 to 0 or 2 to 1, and so forth, which just simply used for um, specifying the, ra uh, the uh, ranges. The rightmost bit we can refer to as zero bit, and the bit size register uh, with a uh, uh, specific number of bits, um, the highest bit would be uh, recorded as bit n minus one, because the bit sequence is counted uh, from zero. So basically, if we have a 4-bit register like this, which is constructed of 4 bits, the uh, information uh, stored in these bits uh, could be anything that like 1, 0, 1, 0, for example. But at the same time, uh, the bit numbering is uh, 0, 1, uh, 2, and 3. So this uh, combination here refers to the range of uh, all of them right here. So this is just a uh, subunit of a register that's called a field, which could be identified by a specific uh, range from left to right. Concept of memory could be developed out of the observations and the number of uh, circuitry that we already have 